Budućnost gave Eagle Kea pounding in Podgorica and extended the win streak to 15 games. Celevita and Crvena Zvezda continue the fight for second place. Typhoon is in a survival mode as well as Sutjeska. The team from Nikšić standout point guard Nikola Pavličević speaks his mind for ABBA magazine. And last but not least, top 5 plays of the 24th round. Welcome to ABBA magazine. Partizan's center Bojo Jumic is out for the remainder of the season with a stress fracture in his right foot. The injury will keep him sidelined for at least two months. Jumic averaged five points and three rebounds per game in ABBA League this season. Budućnost closed out the 24th round of the competition, trouncing Igo Kea 89-74 in Podgorica to extend the win streak to 15 games. Alex Maric had to sit this one out with a high ankle sprain, while the visiting team couldn't count on the point guard Dusan Katnic. The teams were well matched in the first half, finding success beyond the three-point line, but the home team managed to grab a six-point lead at the end of the second quarter, with the scoreboard reading 43-37. Igor Kea played well on defense in the first half of the third period, forcing the home team to work hard for every point with their three-point jumpers falling short of the mark. Igor Kea managed to level the score several times. With three minutes left to play in the third quarter, Budućnost was up by 154-53, when Omar Cook sparked a 7-0 run with a three. It was all Budućnost from that point on, as Igor Kea couldn't come within four for the rest of the night. Julius Jenkins came up with 5 points in the 10-2 run that helped the home team race to a 12-point lead mid-fourth quarter. Soon enough, the lead was at 17 and the 15th consecutive win for the team from Podgorica was in the books. Tadi Dragicevic had a team-high 20 points and 10 rebounds in his best performance so far this season. Jenkins added 15 points for the losing side. Vuk Radivojevic scored 16 points, added 6 rebounds and 5 assists, while Nemanja Krstic chipped in with 13 points. Cedevita put just enough effort against Metalac in Zagreb to avoid an upset and by the score 77-63 remain a step ahead of Crvena Zvezda in the race for the home field advantage in the playoffs. Luka Žoric and Luka Babic remained sidelined due to injuries but Marko Rapović was back in the lineup for the home team. The visiting team put up only a modest resistance plagued by injuries to its key players. Georgi Majstorovic received a blow to the neck in the previous round and the pain prevented him from playing more than the opening 10 minutes of the game while Dusan Kutlesic spent the entire time on the bench with a lingering knee injury. Jevtovic hit a 3 following a tip-off, but the lead was short-lived for Metalac as Cedevita responded with an 8-0 run and was up 19-7 with 2 minutes left to play in the first, following another run of 9 unanswered points. Pilipic scored 7 points to give the home team an 8-point lead at the end of the first quarter. In the second, Bilan and Pullen combo gave Cedevita a 16-point lead, with the American point guard getting fouled twice on the 3-point attempt. However, by the end of the first half, Metalac managed to cut the lead back at 8. The visiting team was down by 6 at the start of the third quarter, but Bilan and Pullen answered the bell once again for the home team, restoring the lead back to double digits for good. Cedevita wasn't great on offense, but the hustle in transition and on offensive boards paid off, 
The home team grabbed the 18th win of the season in spite of 9 missed free throws and only 4 successful 3 point attempts, 3 of them coming from Pullen. 18 turnovers were made up with offensive rebounds and the home team ended the game with 17 more on both ends of the floor. Pilon had the team high 20 points to go along with 12 rebounds but was credited with 7 turnovers as well. Pullen added 17 while Filipic chipped in with 11 points for Cedevita. Nemanja Gordić scored only 2 but grabbed 6 rebounds and dished out 5 assists. Metalats struggled on offense, scoring less than 17 points in every period, mostly from contested jumpers with the shot clock winding down. But somehow Nikola Yevtovich found a way to score game-high 24 points. Crvena Zvezda came up with the most convincing win of this round, handing Sutjeska a 96-67 pounding. Dan Radonjic's team continues to fight for the second place in the standings, leaving Sutjeska to look for points in the two remaining rounds. While Stefan Jovic was out due to his abdominal muscle injury, home team's coach tried to divide the playing time as equally as possible, having in mind the challenges that await the defending champion in the upcoming games. The visitors from Nikšić held their ground in the first half. Crvena Zvezda got off to a better start, but in spite of that and Terence Kinsey's exceptional energy, Sutiska grabbed a three-point lead in the final minutes of the second quarter. It took less than two minutes for the Euroleague member from Belgrade to respond with a 10-0 series, but with Vranjer's buzzer beater 3, the visiting team was down only 40-36 at the halftime. Crvena Zvezda made sure there would be no upset in Pionir, dropping 28 points on the visiting team in the third quarter. Red and Whites played aggressive defense, forcing 20 turnovers, most of them turning into easy points on the fast breaks. But the biggest issues of Igor Jovovich's team were situations where his team gave up a lot of end ones. Mike Tirbes took advantage of these situations on his way to 21 and 10 double double performance. Home team didn't let up in the fourth quarter, resulting in a convincing defeat for Sutjeska. Besides the above mentioned Sirbes, Marko Simonovic distinguished himself, scoring half of the team's eight three pointers to a total of 16 points. Miller also scored in double digits. Sutjeska's Nemanja Vranjes went six out of seven from the three point range, but it was to no avail. Spasojevic added some points in the garbage time to a total of 16 for the defeated team. While forming the roster for Sutiska's very first season in ABA League, the club management decided to put their faith in players who had led the team to last season's playoff in the National League. One of those players is Nikola Pavlicevic, a local boy from Nikšić. The veteran point guard who is averaging nearly three three-pointers per game this season is currently the top long-range shooter in the regional competition. Pavlicevic gave us an insight to his life as a professional basketball player. I started playing basketball when I was 10 in a club that was then called Montenegro, but later changed its name to Ibon. This is where I took my first basketball steps. My coach was Migo Kovac, one of the best coaches in Montenegro in one-on-one -on -one work. I played on all of Ibon's youth teams and the national team of Montenegro. Later, when I was 17, I joined Ibon's senior team in the first B Federal League of Yugoslavia, later Serbia and Montenegro. When the countries parted ways, the team moved to the ranks of the Montenegro's first league. I spent a season with Ibon from Nikšić and the following two with Lovčin from Cetinje. Life led me to Austria where I spent a season, but I decided to return to my hometown to play with Sutjeska in Abba League. As is the case with most of Sutjeska's players, this is Nikola Pavlicevic's first experience of the competition in Abba League. How important is the regional championship for him? It's important not only for me, but for all the players who are now in Sutjeska. Until now, this team hasn't played basketball on the highest level, but in a mid-range level of Montenegrin League. Of course, it means a lot for me and for my teammates, as well as for all the people in the club. Abba League is one of the toughest competitions in Europe, with excellent teams from Euroleague, who had made an impact in the best league in Europe. This is definitely very important for us. Sutjeska 
Sutkiska has had a number of ups and downs in the first Ab League season. The team is second to last and will try to avoid relegation in the final two rounds. So far this season, Palicevic has been the team's top scorer, averaging 12.5 points per game. Is he satisfied with his achievements and what does he expect in the league final? This is our debut season, our first encounter. In the beginning it wasn't easy, but as time went by we got used to the level of competition. We are more comfortable with the game flow at the end of the season. We should have had a couple of victories that we missed out on due to unfavorable circumstances. But on the other hand, we were lucky to get a number of wins. I believe that we should have had two more victories as an insurance for survival, but as it is, we will be fighting to avoid relegation in the last two rounds. We will be playing Buduchon Stenzadar. It will be extremely difficult, but we will give it our best. As long as there's a chance, we will keep the fate. To finish things off, Nikola Pavlicevic talks about his plans and his career. I'm taking it day by day. I can never tell what future has in store for me. Of course, I'm very ambitious, but I'm 27 years old and I don't like to get carried away. I'm happy where I am in Sutjeska. I'm completely content with my performance and with the people who surround me. If I get an opportunity to play in a better league with a better club, I will take it, of course. It appears that Olympia is safe from relegation following a come-from-behind victory against Megalex in Sremska Mitrovica. The playoff-bound Megalex was upset 81-78 and will most likely remain in the fourth place at the end of the regular season. Coach Kasper Potocnik couldn't count on Blaž Mesicek, but nevertheless, Olympia was able to control the game for the most part and snatch a victory in a thriller. The visitors from Ljubljana grabbed an eight-point lead in the early minutes behind an informed Sava Lešić. Dejan Milović's team managed to get back into the game in the second period, but unlike in previous games, this time the comeback fell short as Olympia held on to a slim lead. It seemed that the youngest team in the league would definitely turn things around in the third period. Luvavo and Zagorac led the charge to a six-point lead. However, it didn't last long. The visiting team got hot from the field and kept the shooting percentage and stoned back in the lead. The game was leveled until the very end when Olympia's top shooter Michal Apornik scored the pivotal three-pointer, his fifth of the game for a total of 23 points. The home team turned the ball over three times but still had a shot at the overtime thanks to a number of missed free throws by the visiting team. Danilo Nikolic's shot for the win fell off the mark to give the Slovenian representative an important win in the battle to avoid relegation. Olympia's MVP was Sava Lešić with 19 points, 11 rebounds and 4 assists, with Mića Nikolić providing support with 11 points. In the 8th loss of the season for Megalex, Ognjen Jaramas had a team high 14 points, while Zagorac and Nikolić each added a point less. Partizan grabbed the fifth win in the last six games, defeating Typhoon in Celje. Eleventh victory this season meant Partizan is safe from relegation and is now focused on reaching the fifth spot in the standings. After an 83-65 defeat, defending champion of Slovenia sits dead last in the standings and with only seven wins so far, faces an almost impossible task of avoiding relegation. Both teams had several players out with injuries. Visitors were without Svetković and Jumic, while the team from Šentjur couldn't count on Emir Zimic. Home team made most of their three-point attempts in the first quarter on the way to 25 points, but as the game went on, field goal percentages started to drop off. Edo Muric kept the team from Belgrade in the game, in what would turn out to be his best performance this season. Muric went 6 for 7 from the three-point range, dropped 22 points, grabbed 5 rebounds and dished out 4 assists. His teammates finally woke up in the second period and Partizan grabbed a two-point lead at the halftime. Team led by Aleksandar Djikic tipped the scales in the third period with better defensive play, albeit with the help of an uninspired offense from the home team. With successful three-point attempts by Muric and Wilson, Partizan raced to a comfortable 17-point lead to avoid any last-minute drama. In addition to previously mentioned Muric, Jones and Wilson scored in double digits for the visiting team with 12 points each. Sandy Cebular scored 15 points for the defeated team, while Ponjevic added three less. <laughs> 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 
Only once in the history of ABA League, the Final Four tournament was held outside of the borders of former Yugoslavia. In 2012, Maccabi hosted the event in Israel after dominating the regular part of the season with 24 wins and only two losses. Other teams at that Final Four were the five-time champion Partizan and Cedevita, both with 19 wins and the Buduchans that managed to reach the Final Four for the second consecutive season. Maccabi was coached by David Blatt, who didn't allow a surprise like the one in Tivoli in 2003, when the Pride of Israel was shockingly upset by Zadar in the championship game. Home team demonstrated its might in the semi-final by thumping Buduchans 82-60. Lior Eliyahu was the top scorer with 18 points, while Dublevich scored one point less for Dan Radunic's team. In the second semi-final, Cedevita put an end to Partizan's streak of seven straight championship game appearances. Team from Zagreb was led to their first ABA League final by Chris Owens, who scored 18 points in a game which ended with the final score of 68-56. to Miroslav Radulica was Partizan's top scorer with 15 points. In the championship game, Maccabi was too much for Cedevita to handle, and following a double-digit win, the team from Tel Aviv added the Ivy League Championship title to its already very rich trophy case. In the opening game of the 24th round of ABA League, played in Kreshimir Ciosic Hall, Zadar bested MZT with the final score 84-72. Macedonian representative was led by Goran Petrovski following a suspension for the head coach Aleksandar Jonchevski. Ante Nazor's team started off hot, Filip Kraljevic feasted off some easy opportunities his teammates provided and the home team raced to a double-digit lead. MZT couldn't come up with any defensive plan, having trouble stopping Zadar's Franco Shango, who scored 13 points in the second period, giving his team the game-high 21-point lead at the halftime. In the second half, MZT picked up on defense and with better 3-point percentage managed to win third period 24-13. But in the key moment of the game, the visiting team was unable to decrease the deficit to a single digit and the game was all but won for Zadar when Ante Delas scored from 8 meters away with the shot clock running down. 
Filip Kraljevic had a fantastic game with 24 points and 9 rebounds. Kozi scored 17, while Marko Lukovic stood out on the losing side with a double-double performance of 10 points and 12 rebounds. Zadar will most likely avoid relegation after this victory, while MZT will need a win over Typhoon in the next round. Tibona grabbed an important win, defeating Krka at Dražen Petrovic Hall 85-78. One of Krka's key players, Stefan Sinovets, was once again absent due to injury. Damir Mulamerovic's men were off to a good start, and with a scoring run in the final minutes of the first period, grabbed a double-digit lead. Not much had changed in the second quarter. Ante Žižić, who came in off the bench, didn't take long to get hot, and with the visiting team struggling from the three-point range, Tibona held an 11-point lead at the halftime. Just before the end of the third period, the away team's front court of Lalic and Ivanov sparked a run and with the help of point guard Matic Rebec cut the lead to six. This part of the game was marked by a flagrant foul by Florence on Mate Reutz. The referees rightfully sent the American to the showers early for this push lead move. But it didn't shake up the home team as Tibona kept the lead all the way to the final buzzer for the 11th win of the season. Tibona will continue to fight for the 5th spot in the standings, while Kirka will battle to avoid relegation in the two upcoming games. Joksimovic was the top scorer for Tibona with 20 points, while Ante Žižić had a double-double, 13 points and 10 rebounds. The MVP title for the 24th round of Abali goes to Mike Tirbes. Servina Zvezda's center became the MVP for the second time in the last three rounds. In the convincing win over Sutjeska, Tirbes scored 21 points, added 10 rebounds and with additional two blocks that was enough for 34 index points, the highest in this round of regional competition. We start off our top 5 list in Zagreb. The ball never touched the floor on this fantastic fast break for Cedevita, ending with a behind the back pass from Pulin to Bilan. Fourth place on this week's list goes to Quincy Miller as he shook the defender off and finished with a powerful dunk. Rade Zagorac is back, he put on a few moves against Olympia on offense, but the best one came on defense, as he rose up to put a stop on Zach Wright. Partizan plays better and better, and with the win in Celia is in the fight for the fifth place in the standings. Seems like a sure thing, with more of this from Adin Vrabac. For the third week in a row, Timotej Luvavo with the play of the round, this time with a dunk from the free throw line. You have been watching another edition of ABBA magazine. Regional competition will take a break for the duration of the domestic cup competitions. The league continues on February 26th and will be back in 14 days with another edition of ABBA magazine.